Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. And I would like to wish everybody a in happy International Day of the Older Person. And I would like to thank all of the older persons in my life for their wisdom and their support. Speaker, did you know that right now one in six persons is a senior? By 2030, it will be one in four. The number of people over the age 65 will double during that time period, and the number over 85 will quadruple. We knew this when the baby boomers were born, but how come we haven't rethink our healthcare system to focus on geriatric. Right now, Ontario has very few geriatricians, barely over 100 for such a large population. You look at the training that the occupational therapists, physiotherapists, pharmacists, and very low of it focus on geriatric care. Don't get me wrong, Speaker, aging is not a disease. It is a part of life. 90% of seniors will never go into a long-term care home or retirement home. How do we keep elderly people healthy as they age? Well, certainly the stop smoking, healthy weight, healthy food, exercise, limit alcohol, all of this continues to be a big one. But the pandemic has proven to us what many of us already knew. Personal relationship is a key determinant of health for older people. And as for the older person who live in our long-term care system, we already know that workers' condition is directly linked to the quality of care they receive. Make PSW jobs career, make them full-time with a decent pay, a few sick days, benefits, a pension plan, and a workload that a human being can handle, and the recruitment and recru retention problems in their long-term care is solved. Happy International Day of the Older Person Speaker. Thank you. Member for Oakville North Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. As parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Long Term Care, I am proud that our government is doing everything necessary to protect residents of long term care, staff, family, and essential visitors. As Ontario enters the second wave of COVID, we've just announced that we're investing $540 million to protect long term care. This includes funds for prevention and containment, for repairs and re renovations staff and training to improve infection prevention and control. We're investing $52.5 million to recruit and retain 3,700 frontline health care workers. This includes $8 million for 800 nurses and $10.3 million for 2,000 PSWs. A guaranteed eight weeks of supply of PPE for homes and a better use of our paramedics to help seniors remain in their homes. As this pandemic has gone on, we have learned more and more about how to keep people safe, but we, didn't know what, but we didn't wait to know everything before we acted. In March, we budgeted $243 million specifically for long-term care, part of the $3.3 billion more for health care. We improved infection control, restricted staff to working in one home, and took the difficult step of banning family and visitors. Family and caregiver visits have now resumed, but we must remain vigilant. We will do whatever we need to do to keep our seniors in long-term care safe. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my honor and pleasure to join my Muslim brothers and sisters today to commemorate the beginning of Islamic Heritage Month in Ontario. As a Muslim member of the provincial parliament and the first Somali Canadian elected to provincial parliament in Ontario, I am proud to stand here today to recognize the important contributions Muslim community have made and continue to make here in Ontario, Canada, and throughout the world. Islamic Heritage Month calls Ontarians to celebrate, to educate, and to reflect on Islam's rich and varied history. It is long-standing traditions and the cultural diversity of the Muslim community. Through their outstanding efforts and contributions, Muslim Ontarians continue to enrich the social, economic, cultural, and political fabric of our province. This month, as we all celebrate Islamic Heritage Month and pay a tribute to Muslim Ontarians, let us also recommit to standing together against Islamophobia and to addressing systemic racism so that everyone can build a good life here in Ontario. I want to wish you all a joyful and inspiring Islamic Heritage Month. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Not only today is the International Day of the Older Person, it is also the Moon Festival, 
the day, actual day of the Moon Festival, and I know that the Chinese residents in Richmond Hill will be celebrating. Originally named as the Mid-Autumn Festival, the Moon Festival is one of the most important festivals celebrated by Chinese around the world. When the moon is full, mankind is one. Friends and family will be gathering at scenic spots or parks for moon appreciation parties. Festive food, including mooncake, traditional Chinese tea, and festive fruits will be served, while kids will be running around with lanterns. There will be a Chinese saying, during this fest festive time, one really miss their hometown and families. This is particularly true for Chinese immigrants with families and co close relatives back in their hometown. The city of Richmond Hill understands their need. The Moon Festival celebration was held for the past 12 years. This event is so successful that the city of Markham and Vaughan joined in nine years ago. This year, with the challenge of COVID-19, the celebration is moved on on-site to on-air through Fairchild TV. The celebration is now extended to across Ontario and even to the other provinces in Canada, while Fairchild TV is broadcasted. May I invite you all to enjoy the full moon tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. For decades, successive governments, both Liberal and Conservative, neglected the seniors in our long-term care system. This proved to be deadly when the pandemic hit. In the last five months, almost 2,000 residents and staff have died as a result of COVID-19 in Ontario's long-term care homes. Many died alone, Speaker, alone, without proper care, without a final hug, without being able to say goodbye to people who loved them. It was so bad that the Canadian Armed Forces had to be sent to the homes with the worst outbreaks. It was so bad that nurses had to go to court just so they could access proper PPE. And it's distressing that the government is still not prepared, that seniors might be even less protected in the second wave, with fewer staff than ever before, and outbreaks and deaths in long-term care homes on the rise again. The people of Ontario don't expect the Ford government to always come up with the best ideas and action plans. What they do expect, however, and what they deserve, is for this government to admit to mistakes when you make them and immediately take corrective action, not double down on what we've seen is not working. And so far, this government is doubling down on things that are not working. We cannot make the same mistakes again, Speaker. We must not make the same mistakes. Seniors deserve to live their final years in peace and comfort. They deserve to be treated with dignity. Thank you. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, Mr. Speaker, the 90 seconds I have uh, for this statement are not nearly enough time to say all I want to say about this, but I need to share what I can uh, here in this place. Recent reports of a racist, violent attack in my community of Russell are truly disturbing. A 10-year-old black child had his arm broken in two different places by two other kids repeating racist slurs. Mr. Speaker, we know racism exists in our communities. Overt racism, systemic racism, this cannot be tolerated. We need an intervention. We can condemn, we can denounce, but what really matters are our actions. We, as leaders, must act. Our government must act. My colleagues and I have identified and shared concrete measures that we are calling on the government to take to combat the very real racism in our communities and province, and we are ready to work with the government to make this happen. Our Ontario, our Canada needs to be a place where everyone feels safe and secure. Mr. Speaker, we clearly have work to do, and you can be sure that together we will continue to fight for what's right for our communities, our children, our today, our tomorrow. Thank you. Member for Scarborough, Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. 
I rise today to mark the 60th anniversary of Cyprus National Day. On October 1, 1960, Cypriots gained their independence from British rule. Since then, Cyprus has become a beacon for democracy, freedom, and rule of law. Regrettably, the independence march was interrupted by the 1974 illegal invasion and occupation of one third of the island by the Turkish forces. Since then, the Cypriot leadership has struggled for the unification of Cyprus by peaceful means. On the other hand, the Turkish authorities have been intransigent and made the situation more complicated. On this day, we pay tribute to Ontarians of Cypriot descent whose traditions have become an indelible part of our cultural fabric and whose contribution to the growth, prosperity, and vibrancy of our province is duly appreciated. I look forward to the further in strengthening the bilateral relation between Ontario and Cyprus. Furthermore, Cyprus Independence Day is a time to remember all those who lost their lives throughout the wars in Cyprus, especially the tremendous contribution of the Canadian Armed Forces serving under the UN peacekeeping forces and the 28 Canadian peacekeepers who lost their lives serving in Operation Snow Goose. I extend our province's gratitude to all who share this great heritage and whose accomplishment, struggles, and sacrifices continue to solidify Ontario's position as a region renowned for its commitment to tolerance, diversity, and multiculturalism. Therefore, I would like to extend my warmest congratulations to the Cypriot government and the people. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. It's again an honour to speak on behalf and raise the awareness that Autumn Peltier, a young Anishinaabekwe grade 11 student from Wikwimokong First Nation unceded territory on Manitoulin Island. Autumn has been walking in her grandmother's Josephine's footsteps and has been advocating for the protection of water and of our planet since the age of eight. Autumn has gained national and international recognition and uses that platform to emphasize the connection of the Anishinaabek to the land and water, their role to protect the lifeline of Mother Earth, and bring to the forefront the need for clean water in First Nations across Canada. Autumn was appointed as the Anishinaabek Nation Chief Water Commissioner representing the Anishinaabek Nation of all matters related to water. And in early this September, she became the first ever international recipient of the Jasmina Anima O Youth Award. The award is given to an extraordinary young person who goes above and beyond to improve society's quality of life and community. Raheem Singleton, president and founder of the Black Cotton Foundation, responsible for the award, said, Autumn's bravery, selflessness, leadership, and beautiful spirit are the qualities we look for, and she exceeds all of our check marks. What's also amazing, Speaker, she's just 16. She just celebrated her sweet 16 uh, birthday. And what she wants most, she wants to become Prime Minister. And I'm going to be her campaign manager when that comes up. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Chatham-Kent Leamington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, you know, today I'd like to bring to the attention uh, of an amazing milestone in my riding, as well as an exciting project in the works, both of which address the housing shortage prevalent in Chatham Camp Leamington. As a result, I reached out to Rob Paroli of the Paroli Group Development, who in turn contacted Chatham Kent Mayor Darren Caniff to kick things off. The Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, the Honourable Steve Clark, and I attended a groundbreaking ceremony soon after. The construction of two 120 condo-style apartment complexes are the first to be built in 28 years in the area. Speaker, we already have residents calling to inquire more about these particular apartments. And a second project that I would like to highlight is the work being done to bring the indwell model to my riding in hopes of alleviating the homelessness situation. This model has proven successful in other southwestern Ontario communities as it provides assisted living in an apartment setting with various supports in place, such as mental illness and addiction to help people facing homelessness. As we know, individuals facing these issues are a significant part 
of the homeless population. Programs like this are high in demand, and even more so now, as COVID-19 adds an extra layer of complication to finding long-term solutions for these individuals. And finally, Speaker, Clearview Housing Cooperative, a geared-to-income housing complex, recently added eight new units to their existing footprint. Speaker, our government is putting those in need first. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. It is my honour to rise today to wish a happy retirement to Sandy Woolley, Executive Director of the Nepean Rideau and Osgood Community Resource Centre. The centre is described as a much-needed, well-used community service organization that helps vulnerable individuals and families lead better lives. As a non-profit charitable organization, their services and programs uh, are provided to our community. During her time as executive director, Sandra launched the Shine a Light on Our Community event, which raises money for their youth services. In light of COVID-19, this event is taking place online this year. Speaker, I'm told the event will offer some new and exciting online components and will include a silent auction that's running until October 12, 2020, and details are available on their website. The Community Resource Centre, under Sandra's leadership, has offered a wide variety of services and initiatives to our community, such as the Tools for School program, where 485 children in the Ottawa Nepean area receive backpacks and a gift card from Staples on Merivale Road. In many ways, Sandy has touched the lives of countless people in our community. In their recent newsletter, Board President Daryl Bilodeau stated, from the launch of the center's Shine a Light fundraiser, now in its ninth year, to the Syrian refugee crisis, and most recently the COVID-19 pandemic, Sandy's leadership has been steady and unwavering. As the member for Ottawa West Nepean, please let me uh, provide a very warm thank you to Sandra for all that she has done. Your community thanks you and we wish you a happy retirement. Thank you. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.